Wwitrushkim. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today. I'm Mystical, and today I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. Yes, the Polish intro is back. I forgot to do it last time and people were very upset. So as usual, you have chapters down below to skip to any specific part of this video that you might be most interested in, and with that being said, Let's get right into it. First thing we have on our schedule today is V76. The V76 PTC is slowly rolling out to people, the PTC being the public test channel. And it brings some major changes to the Android system our quests are running. Because yes, V76 actually updates the Android version on your quest from Android 12 all the way up to Android 14. Posted by Luna on Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, are the Android properties of row.build.version.release, which now reports back 14, and row.build.version.sdk, which reports back 30. Four, meaning that a lot of new Android changes are going to be coming our way, as Android 14 was actually the release to introduce quite a bit of new permission changes as well as some system changes as well. What this means for us Quest users, we're not sure of yet 100%. Simply because this is a public test channel, I'm sure a lot more of that will come once this thing goes fully open release. And it's nice to see Meta keeping up with Android releases as well, as they bring in security patches and a bunch of other things that should improve system stability. Talking about those permissions, we do actually know a few of the new permissions that Meta is going to be introducing with V76. From Luna on Twitter, multiple new permissions in the Meta Quest slash Horizon OS V76 PTC, at least one of which I am probably not supposed to be seeing. Avatar camera, codec avatar camera, which is probably the one Luna is talking about that uh, should supposedly not be there yet, connected cameras, location, microphone, music and audio, nearby devices, photos and videos. So in case you guys have an Android phone, a lot of these are going to seem really standard to you. These are permissions that we've had for quite some time. I just hope that they don't introduce restricted permissions because those have been a massive pain in the ass to enable every time an app wants access to a restricted permission on Android. Another cool change that seems to be hiding in V76 is window sharing. If you've ever had anyone visit your home environment in Horizon OS, well, you'd find that they can't actually see the windows that you're seeing. Well, strings in Quest slash Horizon OS V76 PTC suggests that Meta is working on the ability to share windows with other users in Horizon Home, and possibly worlds. This will likely work similarly to SharePlay on Vision OS. So soon, hopefully, we might be able to share windows in our Horizon worlds and Horizon homes with other users, which sounds pretty cool. I wonder if this could replace something like workrooms. Another really cool feature that Meta is adding is the avatar selfie. This was first brought to my attention on our Discord, which you can check out down below in case you want to be kept up to date or just chat with the community. We've recently done an overhaul. But anyway, Avatar Selfie Cam UI in MetaQuest slash Horizon OS v76 PTC doesn't seem to get enabled out of the gate though, which means that this is a feature that you will have to enable, and it's a pretty big one. It will actually work in third-party applications. So in case you guys have ever tried to share your camera inside a third-party app that you sideloaded onto the Quest, you would know that you haven't been able to do so. For example, Discord. If you decided to turn on your camera within Discord, your Quest would ask you whether you want to allow permissions, but then all you would do is get a black screen. And this is what is now going to be taking over when you decide to share your camera permission. Now, this doesn't actually seem to work in MR or VR apps. You need to be inside the home screen for this feature to work, which is an unfortunate little thing. But if you do decide to use this inside your home screen, your Horizon OS avatar will now show up talking in front of a background inside that camera view. And here we can see Luna trying it out on Discord. This is really nice to see, considering the fact that we do need to have some sort of camera view within these apps that require the camera in order for them to properly work. What isn't nice is according to Twitter, these avatars are not using audio to expression or IOBT, which is inside out body tracking. So uh, that's quite a shame. Hopefully that will come in a future update because it would definitely allow a lot more expression for these avatars. But hey, at least now you get 
a floating selfie camera. Another little something that Luna has found, I guess this episode is another simp for Luna essentially, I've datamined a tutorial for the upcoming Navigator system UI overhaul on Meta Horizon OS. This was discovered in V76 PTC. You can find my previous reporting on this in the quoted post below. But TLDR, this is currently planned for V77+. Plus. So this is still a few updates away, however it's going to be a fairly large overhaul to Meta's Horizon OS, so something a lot of us have been looking forward to. In case you don't know what the Navigator OS, it shifts the OS to having a traditional launcher overlay rather than a dock, plus new panel anchoring, etc. It is currently targeting a V77 Plus launch. And from the videos that Luna is sharing, it looks a lot better than the system we have right now. So something fairly large to be looking forward to in the future. Okay, now, last video, we spoke about the big screen Beyond 2, and there's more really good news for the big screen Beyond 2, as apparently it is selling really, really fast. I'm not surprised, they fixed a bunch of issues that people had with the very first release. That's showing, as big screen has sold more Beyond 2 headsets in one day than original big screen headsets in the first six months. That's absolutely crazy. It says this represents 10 times as many Beyond 2 headsets as compared to Beyond 1's launch day two years ago. The startup also said yesterday that it outsold Beyond 1's first day in just 25 minutes and its first two months in just four hours. New orders of Beyond 2 and Beyond 2e will now ship in June, compared to April and May for the first batches respectfully. Compared to the original, Beyond 2 adds clearer, wider lenses and independent eye PD adjustment, all while actually weighing 20 grams less. The Beyond 2e also adds eye tracking via just 1.05 grams of tiny sensors. So absolutely crazy seeing those numbers and seeing these things fly off the shelves, metaphorically of course, because these aren't in stores. Now something interesting from LG. Yep, a company we haven't heard a lot about in the XR space. LG ceases XR product efforts, but will continue R&D. The news of LG ending its XR product plans was first reported by South Korean news outlet The Bell, citing an industry source. In a statement given by the outlet, LG confirmed the claim, but clarified that it will still continue long-term XR research and development. According to The Bell, LG took the decision because it believes the XR market isn't growing as quickly as it expected, and it wants to focus more on heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and robotics. LG really seems to be leaving a lot of the markets it used to be in in the past, including things like phones, for example. LG had a very short history in the VR market. In 2016, it released a compact smartphone tethered headset for viewing 360 videos to terrible reviews. And in 2017, it showed off a PC tethered Steam VR headset prototype that didn't end up shipping. Six years later, in 2023, a South Korean news outlet reported that Meta had partnered with LG to make future Quest Pro headsets, with the first device reportedly planned for 2025. So I do wonder whether that means this is going to continue. After all, they did say they were were controlling their pace when it came to that partnership. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Talking about new headsets, the Valve Deckard has had so many leaks throughout the last few weeks, and now is no different as the Valve Deckard proof of concept had 2K LCD panels and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipsets. These were leaked by Sadly It's Bradley on Twitter, along with a GitHub page actually, but that GitHub page has now unfortunately been taken down, which is incredibly suspicious by Valve. It's as if they're trying to hide something. Over the past four years, Valve has repeatedly confirmed that it's working on a new headset, strongly hinting that it will have a focus on wireless streaming from the PC, and a job listing mentioned at having inside out tracking, camera pass through, environment understanding, eye tracking, and hand tracking. In this time, many references to a Valve headset called the Deckard have been found in the code of SteamVR by VR enthusiast Brad Lynch's Discord data mining group. That Discord is absolute copium, by the way. Of course, joking, simp for Brad, I simp for Brad. Plot twist. Now, Lynch's data mining group has discovered a reference of seven pre production models of Deckard in SteamVR code POC A, POC C, Mini D. POC E, POC F, EV1, and EV2. POC stands for proof of concept, EV stands for engineering validation, and it's unclear what Mini D stands for. 
Let me know down in the comment section below what you think that could possibly stand for. Deckard, POC-A and POC-C were first discovered in the SteamVR code almost four years ago, Mini-D three years ago, and EV2 just a few weeks ago, charting Valve's progression from early prototypes to near final hardware. But what's more notable is that Lynch's team has also discovered code revealing the specific display panels, tracking cameras, and Qualcomm chipset that were used in Deckard POC-F. To quote from Twitter, Deckard POC-F used a Qualcomm SM8650 SoC for development, which is known as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset, which has a GPU one generation newer than the GPU of the XR2 Gen 2. It used 2.8 inch IPM 026M648C LCD panels from JDI, which are 2160 by 2160 at 120 Hertz. It also has two eye tracking cameras and four SLAM cameras. That resolution is roughly equivalent to MetaQuest 3's 2064 by 2208. Now, while this is all super exciting, and this is showing us Valve's progression between these devices, it is important to remember that these are proof of concepts. They're not final devices. It probably will not be what we see finally. What it does tell us though, is that Valve is getting closer and closer to showing us a Deckard. And so many people are so excited for this one. I mean, a Steam VR standalone headset that will have seamless streaming to PC? Love to see it. Apple is splitting its Vision OS teams into two, one for hardware and one for software, which is unsurprising given recent news that during WWDC, they will not be releasing any new XR hardware. These are all reports, by the way, and leaks. So no new hardware. However, a fairly large Vision OS 3.0 update. I can see why they might want to have a team focusing solely on software instead of focusing focusing on both. The Vision Products Group is the division within Apple responsible for the Vision Pro and Vision OS. It was founded in 2015 by Mike Rockwell, a former Dolby executive, and originally known as the Technology Development Group, until the reveal of the Vision Pro in 2023. Rockwell was a prominent figure in Vision Pro's introduction at WWDC 2023, detailing the technical architecture of the device's hardware and software system. Contrary to Apple's established organizational structure, the Vision Products Group has been running as a most self-contained unit, with its own hardware, software, and content teams. But that's seemingly about to change. Today, in a bombshell report, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says that Apple CEO Tim Cook has lost confidence in artificial intelligence chief John Ganandra's ability to deliver the advanced Siri features the company recently announced it had to delay. In a rare shakeup, Cook is appointing Mike Rockwell to a new role under the company's SVP of engineering, where he will be in charge of Siri to get it back on track. Yeah, Siri does need a uh, desperate overhaul. I do believe it doesn't even have the Polish language yet, which is quite upsetting. I mean, it's, it's been years. In his new role, Rockwell will also take the Vision OS parts of the Vision Pro group with him, meaning that he will be running both Vision OS and Siri. As for the Vision hardware teams he's been leaving behind, Rockwell will reportedly be replaced by Paul Mead, currently the Vision Products Group Head of Hardware Engineering. So, this is an interesting one, Apple shaking things up and splitting those groups in two. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, please give me a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. I would love to hear your opinions down in the comment section below. So feel free to let me know what you thought about today's video. And you can do that on the Discord as well. I hope you enjoyed this kind of split form factor is, and you guys get to see a little bit of a different background while I work on making it a bit more exciting. But yeah, thank you so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. Seriously, much love. Thank you so much for your support. You are what makes these videos possible. As usual, if you want me to finish content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your do my bell and see you again next video. Peace. Whoa, that was that was actually really hard. I hope I didn't break. No, 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 it's still fine. It's still fine.